So something I learned today is that Amsterdam, is that the capital of the Netherlands? Yes, it is. Okay, and then what are the, are they known as something else, like the Dutch, like? Well, there's a lot of confusion between Dutch, the Netherlands, Holland. Holland, yeah, that's Amsterdam, the thing. Amsterdam, and then to make it even more difficult, there's a difference between, let's say, normally like the government city is the capital city, yeah. which it's not in Holland. Oh. Namely, in Amsterdam is our capital, and then The Hague is where our government is. Okay. So it's super difficult. Well, where we are right now is Santa Cruz, Southern California, and we're at this this new place. What's this place called? It's called Abbott Square. Abbott Square. Yeah, it's like a food court. It's super, it's actually pretty European. Like people get some drinks, get some food, and yeah. you know, they just hang out over here. It's a great place. It's been wonderful riding with you guys. We're gonna do some more cruising later, but we're looking at the the Citizen Speed T10. So T is for like their derailleur setup, 10, 10 speed Shimano Dior. And this is 11 to 36, so a decent range. Uh, 15 tooth chain ring is what you were telling me up there. Okay, so yeah. it's it's a little bit a little bit smaller. It seems to give me a good enough range to, to pedal quickly, to reach and maintain those 28 mile per hour top speeds. Absolutely, and especially on hills. Uh, the gearing is just a little wider, and that was given in by basically some of our key retailers that have asked us for that. So the new wheel, for example, they yeah. keep us on the tip of our toes. Well, and they're right there like in San Francisco, they have one there and then across in Marin where yes, there's hills. Yeah, yeah hills there's, there's of course a lot of hills over there. But also, you know, just to get out of, uh, you know, zero miles per hour into like four, five, six miles an hour. That gearing is super important. For Gazelle, they sell, what were you saying, like 300,000 bikes a year or something like that? And they... Yeah, so uh, Gazelle is a company that's about 125 years old. Nice. And uh, it's always been in the same location in Duren in Holland, mm -hmm. about an hour east from Amsterdam. And all our bikes are being produced over there. With uh, a great warranty. So it's like two year comprehensive, but 10 years on the frame. Yeah, absolutely. And five years on a, on a suspension. So the, you know, and this one, we've got like a monoshock here. So this is 30 millimeters of travel. It's not, it's not like a ton, but it does take the edge off a little bit. If you hit something like on a curb or you go over a, a bigger bump or a pothole, especially at high speed. So being a speed pedelec, you know, it's got the rigid fork. It's pretty streamlined, pretty sleek right here. And I really like the fenders you guys chose. So you were saying these are Kirana, which is sort of this plastic with a nice aluminum alloy coating on top and the bottom. So you get the lightweight, but without a whole lot of jitters and stuff. It's again, it combines like the best of both worlds in my experience. And I love that with this rear rack, you can see that it's it's got a connection point to the fender, really clean. You've got the little support down there. There's also this extra support here, maybe potentially for a different type of fender or for a bag or something like that, a rack. Uh, th the thing that I noticed about the, the new Cindy Zen is that it's using the Bosch Power Tube 500. So the battery just disappears into that down tube. It's a really beautiful integration, a little bit heavier than the Power Pack and maybe um, a little bit more rare, like the Power Pack 400 and 500, they're cross compatible, the mounts and everything, and you can find them kind of anywhere. So you could ship your bike somewhere, you could borrow or rent, or maybe you already have a Power Pack. The Power Tube looks a lot more beautiful and it brings that weight even lower on the frame, uh, but it does weigh a little bit more. So about 6.6 .6 pounds on that battery versus 5.7, 5.8. So, you know, maybe almost a pound of difference right there. We're gonna take it off a little bit later, but coming down here, this is the Bosch Performance Line Speed, up to 63 Newton meters of torque, up to that 28 mile per hour, 45 kilometers per hour rated. Um, just, a, just a great motor. They're using kind of the traditional plastic cover on it. It looks, looks all right. And then they've got this nice chain cover to keep your pants or you know your skirt or whatever from touching that chain and getting greasy, that, that sort of thing. I really like the sort of the mixedy or the step through frame style here because it lowers the standover height, but this is a more active bike. So you're not gonna get the, the flex, the frame flex. Um, it's a good blend of like sporty and uh, you know, I guess utilitarian with those fenders coming back here to this rack. The rack's actually rated a little bit higher, 27 kilograms, almost 60 pounds instead of 55. Integrated lights, solo by Spininga on the rear. Integrated meaning they both run off that battery pack. And we got the Blue Line 50E, so it's pretty bright and it has sort of windows on the side. If I turn on the display panel up here, you should see the, the light comes right on because as a speed pedelec, that's one of the kind of the safety features. Also coming back down here to the tires, reflective sidewalls, gonna keep you visible from the side, especially since this only comes in one frame color. It's a satin black with some gray accents and stuff. 
Uh, these are the Contact Plus from Continental, and they're rated up to 50 kilometers per hour. So coming back to over 28 miles per hour, and they've got some puncture protection going on. They're designed to be efficient, reliable. And if you look at the wheels too, these are deeper dish, maybe like a mid-dish rim. That's gonna give you a, a little bit more strength. It shortens the spoke length. These are 14 gauge extra strength uh, spokes. Just a, a great setup here and pretty traditional in terms of hub spacing, 100 millimeters up front. 135 in the rear both have quick release that's really nice one of the the pros on a mid drive and this mid drive you know the bosch performance line and really all the bosch they're listening to rear wheel speed pedal cadence pedal torque over a thousand times per second and they're giving you shift detection so as you're shifting through those gears perhaps clumsily or you know maybe there's some traffic that you're dealing with the motor's listening and it's listening for your pedal strokes and then it's it's kind of comparing that against uh, sh shifting feedback and it's designed to ease off a little bit so it won't mash those gears it won't you know wear your drivetrain prematurely and then again back to the wheels for a second here they're a little bit more efficient so this is 700 by 42 c that's 28 by 1.6 inch a little bit narrower but not super narrow like a road bike and then just again a little bit tougher really nice brake setup here shimano m315s three finger adjustable reach levers 160 millimeters front and rear so you do want that extra braking power when you're at higher speed we've got the utility of a kickstand here that's positioned well out of the way and it's tool free so a minute ago we were trying to position the bike for for photos and i was like oh i wish the kickstand was longer and you were like Click, click. Just clicked it. It's Live is one click away. No problem. No problem. And internally routed cables. I mean, you know, this bike just, you guys do a good job. Like, it's high quality stuff. Thanks. Uh, yeah, you're part of the Pong group. So, yeah. you know, that is Gazelle, Focus, Kalkoff. And then we've also got Faraday now. Yeah, absolutely. And then we have Santa Cruz bicycles. Santa Cruz. And Cervelo. That's why we're here in, in Santa Cruz, absolutely. right? Absolutely. We were just That's, at the headquarters. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're based out of Santa Cruz as well. We have a full team of support. I want to introduce your team, okay? We were, we were at the thing earlier, so I'm going to cut to that and you guys can say hey to the, the team. We're in a parking lot in Santa Cruz, right down from Santa Cruz Bikes, which the Pong Group owns, and I'm here with part of the team. So. It's just been awesome to talk to you guys this morning. They were giving me some coffee and croissants, creating the, the Royal Dutch experience. We've got these beautiful tulips here. And uh, I wanted to show this because if you're going to a demo event, maybe at a dealer or it, it sounds like in Northern California, where we're at right now, they do these events at, at some of the corporate, uh, just kind of like office parks and give people some you know experiences like riding and that's what that's part of your job right yeah exactly i travel around to different areas and help get people on the bikes love it. one of the things that's always kind of stood out to me about gazelle is that you have this this range of different very approachable bikes very utilitarian um and avod who was kind of picking me up earlier today and bringing me to this little event was was talking about how that's kind of the car in the netherlands people get around that's that's how you do it yeah it's the, the easiest way to get, get from a to b and uh, going from uh, north to south Amsterdam on a bike is so much quicker than going by train or tram or metro. Pretty cool, right guys? So we're back at, what is this place called? Abbott Square. Abbott Square, we're back at Abbott Square. It's my first time. Um, and you know, just looking at this frame, I love that it comes in, in three sizes because we were talking about standover height a minute ago and making this approachable, but there's more to this frame and the paint and the quality. Can you tell me about the, you know, your headquarters and stuff like back in the Netherlands? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a uh, factory in Holland where all our bikes are being uh, produced. And we have like a 1.6 kilometer um, paint shop over there. So all our bikes, are painted over there. We have two layers layers of paint. We coat them. We put the transfers on, like the, the sticker sets, stickers, and then we yeah. and then we do like another um, set of like clear coating over it. And we over test, the stickers. Yeah, so they over don't the get stickers. Snagged. So exactly. Very cool. And then uh, we do our like we are testing our bikes. We have about like sixty kind of different tests yeah. on our uh, on our on our bikes. I've heard UV saltwater yeah, testing. Yeah, the thing is like you know in Holland our bikes the majority of our bikes are still being sold in in the Netherlands and people use their bikes for everything. Yeah. So and the market over there or let's say the environment is pretty rigid as in like you have salt water you have a lot of rain way too. Too much rain. <laughs> uh, people jank their, uh, their their bikes into bike racks, uh, so it's a very rough environment to kind of hold up like your bike. Yeah. And that's what we're testing. And as we are giving, let's say, all that warranty on our bikes, we want to make sure that all our people kind of keep enjoying the ride. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's why we kind of do all the tests right before. When we were talking about this sticker down here on the the left 
chain stay and it, it's got the frame number here it says when it was made made in the netherlands so you know it's it's interesting to me that you do have this higher level of quality and some nicer parts some of these are in-house parts by the way so they got this 27.2 millimeter seat post it's just alloy but they actually have a spacer in here so you were saying that that kind of makes it smoother for the seat post to go up and down and yeah, maybe and it a protects little... the, uh, the seat post more it does this is something you you barely see it at our brands was something we do and uh yeah it's you know it's over 125 years of like you know experience in like building bikes and you know what we hear back from the retailers here in the u.s as well is that some of our bikes are assembled very differently from let's say traditional bikes yeah but that makes makes it a gazelle basically That's you mentioned 125 or 150 years or what 125 years uh what's we the were royal stable. dutch thing what's oh that the royal dutch thing is basically that in every kind of segment um there is a company in holland mm -hmm. that has a royal let's say title okay you have to exist over a hundred years and you have to have a leading kind of position in that segment and you have to do some something good to the environment so it's as a well. real great call out yeah, yeah it's like you know company. gazelle is a royal company uh, royal dutch airlines klm is a royal oh. company as well and next to that you have a bunch of other royal companies uh, in the netherlands and uh, you wouldn't be surprised that, you know, our royal family also bikes on gazelle bikes. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. They yeah. got the royal shout out. Uh, so coming back to some of these these nicer touch points here, BBB, that apparently that's a gazelle brand, Spectrum 155, yeah, they're really we, we, comfortable it's owned, saddle. It's, it's owned by the Pond bike bike family. Okay. And uh, so we, we do parts, we do bikes, we do mountain bikes, we do rope bikes. Well, and the other touch points here, I like the little gazelle branded flick bell, just a little bit nicer, right? Like, you know, eh, it's just a bell, but this one, it, I get the impression it's gonna hold up a little bit better than the cheaper ones you see. They've got ergon grips, locking, so they're not gonna spin on you. I was weighing the frame earlier, and this is the medium size frame 53, okay? And it weighs about 54.6 pounds, which, you know, it's, I think some of that, it's just a little bit heavier because of the battery, just a little bit, a little bit. The fenders add something, the suspension here, but the utility of having a nicer rack, having the fenders, having an integrated, uh, this is the AXA Defender, it's a cafe lock. So we're, we're here at the cafe, there isn't, there's a bike rack like super nearby. You could lock your bike, you could you know use the cafe lock and maybe jump in there and someone would have to lift and run off with your bike to steal it. So this is, it's a perfect example of maybe how to use this, but otherwise commuting, people getting around town, trying to go a little bit faster maybe and, and more efficient. This is one of your sportier models. Absolutely, yeah. This is like, you know, you are a commuter kind of bike, but uh, next to that, of course, uh, people that, you know, go out for a bike ride with their, with their husband or their wife or something or with friends and just wanna, you know, hang out with with their e-bike, that's not a problem either with this bike. There's some of the other ones. Okay, Absolutely. so these are like the step throughs that we're looking at over here. And we were doing a ride earlier. I'm gonna splice some of that footage in, but so you have some choice of comfort and then utility. And then for me, again, this is the sportier one. You said this is the bike you ride, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, gets to uh, gets me to work really quickly. It gets me back home really quickly and as well. Both important. Yeah, absolutely. And the price, I think that was one of the big takeaways for me and why I was commenting on economies of scale earlier, because there are a lot of bikes in this class three that have a nicer, you know, the nicer battery, the nicer display and stuff. They tend to be like closer to that $5,000 mark. And this one's what, $42.99? Yeah, it's $42.99 and it has the 500 watt hour battery. It has the Intivia, it has like, it's super highly specced for a really competitive price as well. There's one and thing it doesn't have. What is it now? Bottle cage. Oh, it doesn't have There's bottle no cage. bottle cage. Basket. But we have figured that out because what you can do is you can just strap like a bottle. Top your bottle laundry. in there. Creative, yeah, very creative. That's and how look, we do it. You know, you've got the, the bungee loops, you've got the, the bag set up and everything. And I was thinking about, it. it's like, could you have it there? You might get kicked down here. Same thing. There's always trade-offs. And again, my job is to kind of look at this and talk Absolutely. about, you know, what, what the, what we've got going on here. So again, nicer cranks, Miranda, relatively lightweight. Um, these pedals also gazelle branded they've got an alloy core and then they're plastic and rubber uh, kind of the grip right so this is the sort of pedal where if you slipped off in the rain or something hopefully the, the rubber would hold you but you wouldn't get your shin cut I come from like a mountain bike background so sometimes I go for something that's a little bit wider and you know pins and stuff um, I already talked about some of the weight differences and stuff and I'd really like to show the battery can you can you help out Absolutely. with that so it's a one key system so like this one key you use that you get two keys when you buy a new bike from us and then that one key actually is the key also to the battery and this is basically the battery 
So you can charge your battery by taking the battery out. So for example, if you don't have a socket in your uh, garage, you can you know, take, take your battery upstairs or you can charge it through your, through your bike on the side over here. And I love the positioning because a lot of times e-bikes will have like a plug right down here by the crank arms. This one's higher up, yeah, stays out of the way. Yeah, you don't have to bend all that much. It's yeah. super easy to kind of access. Nice cover too. So, you know, the, the power two battery, I've seen it on some other bikes and sometimes it comes in from the bottom and that's a little bit more precarious, maybe easier to drop. I like that this one seats in from the top. You've got the plastic cover on it. There's even that little power button so you can press that and then it has like a little green yeah. LED lights that come on here and give you some feedback about charge level. So like you were saying, um, Avod, yes. am, I, am I getting, okay. Yeah, you're doing a great job on that. <laughs> Thank you. He was talking about charging uh, independently and that is one of the big opportunities. I actually brought the charger in my backpack if I can get it out. There we go. So this is the Bosch four amp charger, 1.7 pounds, relatively lightweight. One of my favorites because it puts out four amps so you can fill this thing a lot faster. They say between, you know, three and five hours. So I estimate four hours. It's best to kind of keep your battery above 20% if you can. And especially if you're going on a trip, you're not gonna be using it for a while. So I think the last thing to talk about is the display panel. And this is one of my favorites. This is the Bosch Intuvia, it's removable. So let's say you're bringing the battery inside to protect it from the extreme cold or heat. Uh, you could also take the display and that way it won't get scratched at a bike rack. There is a set screw so you can lock it onto the bike if you really want to. Um, but it's just nice to be able to remove it. It has an integrated micro USB port over here. So maybe you're using a GPS app or I don't know, an additional light or something. It's, it's nice that you can tap into that. That's unique to the Bosch uh, display setup here. And then a remote button pad that's relatively easy to reach. The buttons are really easy and, and kind of tactile. There's a little bit of a click and even without looking down, especially on a speed pedal, like if you're paying attention to traffic, there's a rubberized feel and then plus and minus are just, it's, it's obvious, like it works really well. To boot the bike up, you press the power button. It comes on very quickly. It's backlit at all times, but you know, you're probably not seeing it because we're, it's broad daylight today. Uh, four levels of assist. We use the plus button to go up to eco and then up to tour, sport and turbo. I think turbo is like 275% and then, you know, down at eco, it, it's, it's stepped up progressively. So if you want to go a little bit slower, you don't have to go 28 miles per hour on this bike. And, and in fact, if you go over 20, you know, with the air resistance, you, you get, you're, you're draining the battery faster. Absolutely, yeah. 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 So yeah. It's, it's a good trade-off. I, I, again, I just love how big this display is. It's easy to see, I'm nearsighted, and there's pr there might be a little bit of glare going on here with the sun. You can easily pivot it forward or backwards to reduce that glare. And then if we, we hit the walk assist, I like it looks like that's enabled, so you would just hold the plus button. Yep. Maybe limp home if you got a flat tire, or maybe you're walking across the park or something. We, we are talking about a 50 plus pound bike here. Clock down here, if you press the I here or here, cycles through to max speed, average speed, trip time, and then range is so cool. It dynamically estimates how far the bike can go based on your last mile or so of riding, the battery capacity, and then just the, how the bikes might be performing, okay? So over time, if, they, if the motor is noticing that you're climbing more, or if it's noticing like, oh no, it's, it's windy, the wind's at your back, it's, it's just so cool to have that feedback because the battery infographics just five ticks. 20% increments leave something to be kind of guessing in some some ways so way up in turbo it says up oh, all the way down to 23 miles you can use those two like feedback points to determine whether you can make it home on time you're going to meet your family like you want to get you on a sprint but Absolutely. maybe you have that extra mile you're like okay I, i'm going to sprint most of the way and then i'm going to take it down to to sport mode for the last mile or something like that it's just it's just a phenomenal a phenomenal setup and it's nice to see that on this bike because you know bosch also has the purion which is the tiny little one it doesn't have the big display it's not removable and stuff so for a commuting platform i think that's the right choice you you give you give the four amp charger you give the nicer display so again the value to me there there is value here say i'm a little bit biased because i work for i Giselle. know right, right we're, we're talking <laughs> but. i'm trying being straight with you guys right like i see a lot of bikes gazelle is one of the nicer brands and they're bringing in that lower price point because you have such you, you you own like all these different you're part of that big group yeah it's economies of scale in the end and uh but it's also you know we we yeah we, i think we we're bringing a nice bike into the market and uh we're pretty new to the u.s market as well yeah um of course we've been selling through our sister brands over the last couple of years a year ago or something we really set up our own office with our own gazelle people uh, we employ about let's say 10 people right now and 35 independent sales reps. Yeah. We really are making an investment to, to enter the US market. 
and uh, we believe uh, it's all about the product in the end. So the, the last couple points of feedback, they're more specific to me. I do like that it has suspension, but to be honest with you, it's very minimal. I mean, the travel's limited. There is some adjustment in here. You can go in and kind of pull this cuff down and you can tighten that up. And I think that, that adjusts preload, but I can't say for certain. I like that we've got 20, two of them, 20 millimeter spacers, and then a little bit more of a rise. I noticed that on the different size bikes, you'll have like a 90, 100, and then 110 millimeter stem. So it's 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 specific to, to the size of the bike. I really appreciate that. I would probably put on a seat post suspension here if I was going at higher speed and longer distances, because it is a little bit more active. The tire pressure, it, it's rated a little bit higher. You know, these are designed to be inflated. Uh, more fully than, than you might see on like one of the cruiser bars. Yeah, up to 73 PSI. So th that's some of the takeaway, the deep dish rims. It, it does, it makes this a responsive bike. It's higher performance, but comfort is, so So again, I'm glad that they integrated this. And it is just such a nice looking bike. I, I see a lot of other bikes like this that don't have any suspension. I'm thinking of like the giant Quick E, for example. It's, it's just fully rigid. So anyway, good balance. I think we might get out there and just do a test ride. Just a gorgeous day here in Santa Cruz. It's a little bit windy, but you know, hopefully you're getting getting some nice third person shots. Gabe's over here on the City Zen Speed. And then we've got Evod over here on the Gazelle NL. I'm gonna be over here on the Arroyo C8. We'll just we'll trade off, do some riding. beautiful. Ivad was saying he commutes on this bike path to work on the daily. I should just look at that. Look at the beautiful ocean. It's just quiet. This is great. Look at this. Just gorgeous. Yeah, we're just cruising along on our bike ride and found a house on wheels here. It's got a front door and everything. It's kind of fun. A lot of funky stuff in Santa Cruz. Never a dull day. Never a dull day, right. There you go. Okay guys, from here you can see the chain. I'll be shifting through some gears and you can listen for shift detection. Again, the 15 tooth chain ring, it spins at two and a half revolutions for every crank revolution. So there is a little bit more friction. It's a reduction gear system and all the Bosch performance line motors of this generation have that. So if you're pedaling without assist or trying to go beyond 28, um, there's just a little bit of drag, but otherwise it's one of the most responsive, uh, just a higher torque, really efficient system. I do like it. Um, so here we go, let's give it a ride. Nice. <laughs> I did hit a couple bumps there trying to get the fenders to, you know, make any noise. It's very quiet. The suspension fork, however, it's it's a little more like kunk, 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 kunk. It's, it's not as smooth and fluid as like a, a really nice air fork for a mountain bike or something. It's just enough to kind of take the edge off for a bigger hit. Okay, guys, we're on Pacific Avenue. Just a beautiful, you know, it's kind of like a mall environment, walking mall and, and great bike paths and stuff. So I'm gonna cruise along and just talk about performance of the bike. I'm in tour mode right now. That's that's kind of comfortable for me, but I'm gonna take it up to turbo to activate that motor, you know, get the, get the noise kind of elevated. Um, and of course the top speed too. I'm really, I'm digging the, the integration of the battery and it's performing just like I'm used to with a, a Bosch bike. Yeah, really responsive. Disc brakes are working well, very smooth. I'm able to stop easily with just one hand, a couple fingers. There we go. You know, in this environment, this, the bike's plenty fast. You've got more than enough speed uh, to keep up with cars and 
just enjoy the environment. Feeling very stable. Wow. Check out the, got the movie theater up here. Beautiful trees. off the bike for a second here. Do that walk mode again. So if you press the, the top button and then hold plus, just helps you ride along. It's a beautiful bookshop. I've been in there a couple times. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to head back over with that, that coast trail. Maybe we can take that back. That was really pretty earlier. Is that cool? Yeah. We're just going to head on. Lead on. Let's go that way. Cool. Take it right here. Thanks. Beautiful music. Dun, 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 dun. Can we go straight? Uh, yeah, we can, or left turn. Actually. Left turn, okay. Now I'll do some speed tests. see the display really well now it's giving me the shift recommendation you see that little arrow in the top left corner of the screen that means shift gears up to make it easier for the motor to hit and maintain those high speeds I'm gonna do that I like the shifters too it's like a two-way high shifter and then a multi shift for low so it's, it's good stuff Shimano Dior this one doesn't have the one-way clutch that you sometimes see on like mountain bikes and stuff, um, but it does, you know, gets the job done and it's a little bit higher spec than, you know, Alivio or Altus or something. I'm really liking the solar panels at the library. It's a good way to shade your car. Thanks, yep, they're telling me, watch out for those tracks. You don't want to get Nicely done. <laughs> you don't want to get caught up on those and bite the dust. Straight? Can we go by that skate park on the way? Is that sort of on the way? Or are we? Yeah, that'd be cool. There's a famous skate park here and just all kinds of cool stuff like the boardwalk. Neat, neat stuff to explore, and we're gonna do that for some of the other gazelle reviews later. Thanks. These beautiful old houses. Now I'm gonna try to hit that top speed. I'm gonna try to keep up with you. <laughs> He's gonna try. I'm gonna cut up. Good. Uh oh. Okay, 26, 27. 27.6, 27.8, yeah, so that's the top right there. We're about 28. Uh, so it's definitely doable that that Bosch speed motor works pretty well. You know, it's a little more active. You do have to switch gears, but the motor supports you up to 120 RPM. So, you know, you can pedal faster. You don't necessarily have to switch up as early as you do with some of the other systems where they cut out at 100 or fade out at 110, 120. I like that about the Bosch system. I guess we lost our buddies back there. He's 
got it stuck in my head. <laughs> da, 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 da. And a multi shift low gear trigger. I guess that's the difference between having a speed pedal like and not making a light or just being able to pull ahead and keep up with traffic. <laughs> These guys. Nice. <laughs> Bungees are coming in handy for the yep. the jacket back there. For He's going for it. And that's a testament to the adjustable angle stem because sometimes those aren't aren't real solid, but uh, they're using a nicer one here. Oh, for the skate park? park? Yeah, there it is. Beautiful. We just walk the bikes maybe. We can see it from this side. I think that's probably good enough. Suspension fork is coming in handy already. Who says you can't take a hybrid bike off road? Look at that. Fun, really beautiful park. Wow. Nice transfers, some vert ramp sections. Got ourselves an adventure. So, do we go over to that trail to get back to the... To the Bork Walk? Yeah. We can try, let's do it. So maybe I'm just gonna get off my bike and just... <laughs> the Go Anywhere Machine. Beautiful Santa Cruz. It's those tracks again. Nice. Oh, here's our hill test. You can see up here on the display, the power meter is like really surging because we are climbing. This is a pretty steep little section, but no problem. No one had to get up out of their saddles. Yeah, real efficient. That's the beauty of the bikes. Stop signs aren't as much of an issue. You've got a little bit of assist helping you get going again. CEO of Ibis. 
I really? Just bikes, yeah, the mountain bikes. The CEO of Ibis just yeah. ran down. Wow. <laughs> what a special place. Over there with the amusement park. Uh, Howdy. Uh, sailboat, yeah. That's the O'Neill sailboat out there? Yep, yeah, you can go out on it on uh, uh, some charters. Oh wow, those guys make wetsuits. And we're heading up towards the lighthouse, which is a good surf spot. Lighthouse Field. So close. Maybe a little bit mushy today. Well guys, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along, checking out Santa Cruz, and of course, the Gazelle City Zen Speed T10. I reviewed just the non-Speed T10, maybe 2017 model. Um, good stuff. I hope you've had a little bit of fun tagging along. For all the specs, like standover height, minimum saddle position, width, all that stuff, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com along with the forums. Have fun out there, be safe, especially around all the people, and I'll see you next time.